Glory to God, church. Why don't we find our seats this evening? We're going to put our hands together to an attitude of praise. Put your hands together and sing the song that we want to see. We want to see Jesus lifted high, spreading the gospel across this land. No man will hear the truth and know he is the way to heaven. We want to see Jesus lifted high, spreading the gospel across this land. No man will hear the truth and know he is the way to heaven. We want to see, we want to see, we want to see Jesus lifted high. We want to see, we want to see, we want to see Jesus lifted high. Why don't we stand to our feet tonight? We're going to continue the attitude of praise. We want, we want to see Jesus lifted high. Spreading the gospel across this land. No man will hear the truth and know he is the way to heaven. We want to see Jesus lifted high. Spreading the gospel across this land. No man will hear the truth and know he is. Oh, we want to see. We want to see. We want to see. We want to see Jesus lifted high. Wanna step by step, step by step, we're moving forward, one by one, the souls are one. Every prayer's a powerful weapon, strongholds come tumbling down and down and down and down. One more time, let's sing it out. We wanna see Jesus lifted high. We wanna see Jesus lifted high. Spreading the gospel across this land. No man will hear the truth and know he is the way to heaven. We want to see Jesus lifted high. Spreading the gospel across this land. No man will hear the truth and know he is the way to heaven. We want to see, we want to see, we want to see Jesus lifted high. We want to see. We want to see, we want to step by step, step by step, we're moving forward, one by one, the souls are one, every prayer's a powerful weapon, strongholds come tumbling down and down and down, we want to see, we want to see, we want to see, we want to see Jesus lifted high, we want to see, we want to see. Let's sing it again. We want to see. We want to see. We want to see. We want to see Jesus lifted high. We want to see. We want to see. We want to see Jesus lifted high. Glory to God. Let's give him praise tonight. Vamos a cantar esta canción. Te doy gloria. Put your hands together, church. We're going to sing the song of Te doy gloria. Si, Señor, cuán hermoso. Cuán hermoso eres Jesús, son tus palabras, es tu amor, cuán glorioso eres Jesús, es tu poder, fue tu cruz, la que me salvó. Un momento ahí con libertad. Te doy gloria, gloria. Te doy gloria, gloria. Te doy gloria, gloria. A ti Jesús. Te doy, te doy gloria, gloria. Te doy gloria, gloria. Te doy gloria. Cuán hermoso eres Jesús, son tus palabras, es tu amor, cuán glorioso eres Jesús, es tu poder, fue tu cruz la 
que me salvó Me rescató Un momento ahí No soy libertad Te doy gloria, gloria Te doy gloria, gloria Te doy gloria, gloria A ti Jesús Corona de espinos, existe rey por siempre. Con una corona de espinos, existe. Con una corona, con una corona de espinos, existe rey por siempre. Con una corona de espinos, existe. Sí, señor, con una corona, con una corona de espinos, existe. Por siempre con una corona de espinos te, te doy gloria te doy gloria gloria te doy gloria gloria te doy gloria gloria a ti Jesús te doy te doy gloria
why don't we close our eyes, lift our hands, come before the throne of grace with an attitude of worship, sing a song out heart of worship when the music fades. When the music fades, all is slipped away, and I simply come longing. Longing just to bring something that's a worth that will bless your heart. Oh, I'll bring you more, God. I'll bring you more than a song, for a song in itself is not what you have required. You search much deeper. Search much deeper, you search much deeper within through the way things up here. You're looking into my heart. last time tonight before the altar of God. Sing of his splendor and how great is our God. The splendor of the King. He wraps himself. He wraps himself in light. And darkness tries to hide. It trembles at his voice. It trembles at his voice. How great is our God? How great.
three in one. The God had three in one. Father, Spirit, Son, the Lion and the Lamb, the Lion. Oh, how great is our God! How great is our God! Sing with me, how great. This evening, church, we thank you, Jesus. Oh, she a la la ba sende de 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 be si en de 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 de. Oh, how great are you, Jesus Christ? Amen. King David wrote in Psalms 147. He said, "How great is our Lord and mighty in power." Amen. Our God is great. Can you all say Amen? No matter how big your problem is, it doesn't matter how. 
uh, big your struggle is, this evening we serve a great and mighty God. And we're going to go before His throne of grace in prayer and with supplication. I want to ask you to continue to pray uh, for our fellowship. Amen. You pray for our leaders. You pray for our, our own congregation, what God is doing in our midst. We want to always keep in prayer our upcoming conference. It's right around the corner. Uh, next thing you know, we're going to blink and it's conference season already, which is already in the midst. Uh, so just pray, amen, that God's grace would be upon our conference uh, that's coming up. Amen, that God's grace would be upon our service tonight as Pastor Jeremy comes and brings the word in due season. Amen, we want to believe God for good things tonight. Hallelujah. Uh, so as we pray before the Lord, our brother Adan Molina is going to come to Mike and open us up in prayer, church. Let's lift up our hands and voices tonight. Heavenly Father, we so thank you for your wonderful goodness, God. We thank you for your grace and mercy this evening, God. We pray. Lord Jesus, that your grace would be upon our service, Father. Move tonight, God. That your grace Jesus. Be with you. Father, we thank you, God, for this night, God, for this service, God. We are believing you, God, for breakthrough, Father, in our lives. God, I pray let our hearts, God, be open, God, before you, God, that you would guide us and direct us father we need you god i pray father lord for this service tonight we pray for pastor moreno god that you would anoint this message god use him father to speak to our lives father we thank you god lord for all that you're doing god all that you're going to do god we give you all the glory father in jesus name amen, amen. god bless you church Hello and welcome to the Dorm McAllen. My name is Alyssa and I'm excited to see you back in service. Listen up because I have some exciting announcements to share with you. Join us this Wednesday night for our midweek service starting at 7 p.m. with prayer at 6 p.m. We hope to see you there. Come join us on Friday nights as we dive into the Word of God during our home Bible studies. Not only will you grow in your knowledge of the Bible, but you will also build strong relationships with other believers. Check out the information sheet located at the back of the sanctuary for more details. Come and join us this Saturday at 10 a.m. for our weekly outreach event. We're excited to gather as a community and spread the message of the gospel. We can't wait to see you there. Tomorrow night, we will be getting together at 10th and Alana to street preach and share the gospel. The event kicks off at 7 p.m., so make sure to join us. Can't wait to see you there. Thank you for joining us this week. If you have any questions or need more information about the events mentioned, please visit our website, thedormacallan.com. Remember to download our app to stay connected and informed about our latest news and updates. Your support means a lot to us and we can't wait to welcome you back soon. All right. Amen. Good evening, everybody. It's good to see you this wonderful night in the house of God. Um, I'm not going to lie to you. It was a slight struggle to make it to service in the sense that... Uh, Let's just say I was almost in a food coma. <laughs> Had some Holy Ghost homemade Indian food, and man, it was wonderful. But we're here tonight to receive some uh, food from heaven, amen, some manna. So just bear with me. We have just two short announcements, as you heard them on the um, announcements, and that is that we have our worship concert coming this Saturday. It'll be at 8 p.m., so I want to encourage everyone to make it out to that worship concert and then just this coming Sunday, we really want to encourage you to make it out to our um, Easter service, resurrection service. We're going to be having our communion, baptisms, and our Easter egg hunt uh, next coming Sunday. So we want to encourage you to make it out to that. We do have a sign-up sheet in the back for those of you all who want to get baptized. Amen. And that's all the way we have in announcements. We're going to take this time to receive the Lord's offering this evening. Amen. <clears throat> I just want to share with you a, a, a quick quote by J. Oswald Sanders. He is a pastor and an author. He wrote one of the books on uh, spiritual leadership. It's a really great book. But he said, the basic question is not how much of our money we should give to God, but how much of God's money we should keep to ourselves. And that really puts giving in perspective because it reminds us that everything we have belongs to God. All right, we all know that, we understand that, and the truth is tonight is how much are we going, how much of God's money are we going to keep, amen, in our lives? The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 11, verse 24, we've all heard this before, but it says, There is one who scatters and yet increases all the more, 
And there is one who withholds what is justly due, and yet it results only in want. The generous man will be prosperous, and he who waters will himself be watered. I want to encourage you tonight, let's continue to be faithful in our tithes, in our offerings, in our world evangelism. Everything we do as a church, amen, is because we all give together to the house of God to further the kingdom, to see souls won, to see flags planted in various nations and cities across this world. Let's continue to give and be faithful to the house of God. And I'm going to ask our brother Omar Gassas if we'd pray for this time of giving. Amen. God bless you, church. Glory to God. As that play goes around, we're going to see a song out. I am God. church. Hey Amen. God bless you. I can second that motion that Pastor William was saying. I uh, was supposed to behave, but I went to go eat some barbecue and I fell into temptation. Amen. So. But we're here and hopefully ready to hear from God. Amen. If you have your Bibles, you can open them up to the book of James. James chapter 1. If you excuse me, I'm going to have a cough drop in my a cough drop the whole time, so bear with me. How many here, raise your hand if you've ever prayed, God, give me more problems. Raise your hand. Nobody? How many here have prayed, God, you know what? Make me struggle. Raise your hand if you've ever asked God, God, give me the worst couple of months that I've ever lived through. Give them to me. <laughs> right? No, nobody in the right mind would pray that. I don't think. But we do pray, God, make me a leader. God, make me a better husband. God, uh, uh, enlarge me. God, I ask you to, to bless me, bless my business, bless my hand, increase my finances. Can I tell you that by praying those things, there's a process to get there that God puts us through. So you may not be praying for more problems. You may not be praying for more difficulty, for mountains to climb, for giants to take down. But if we're going to grow in God, how many know there's some things we have to get through in order to get there? I've entitled this sermon, Growth, because I do believe that we do want to grow. How many want to do better than what they're doing right now? There's things you want to see in your life. There's accomplishments. There's goals that you've set before yourself. You want these things. Can I tell you they don't happen? They don't just get handed to you. Not even in the things of God do things just get handed to you. There's processes that we must go through before we can be used fully. There was a pastor that was telling me that he used to work at a moving company. How many of you have ever worked at a moving company? I just moved and next time I'm using a moving company. Amen. I was telling my wife, we just got here. We came with three suitcases. How do we have? Anyway. God is good. Amen. This moving company that he worked at supplied them in their trucks with some small rubber bands, a package of some small rubber bands. And he said, hey, what are these for? Well, they're to wrap around the furniture as you're moving them. How many have ever seen these rubber bands? 
I had never seen them, so I looked them up. I have them right here. If you can give me that first picture. So these are the rubber bands. They don't look like much, you know, just simple rubber bands. But they're meant to go around furniture, large pieces of furniture. They're to hold them in place, to help them carry them so they don't fall over. The rubber of the a band helps, helps it to stay in place. And this is what they're supposed to do. Give me the next picture. See right there, they keep the drawers shut. <laughs> Even though that looks... So these rubber bands are supposed to stretch. And that's a, a, a small looking dresser. There's other ones. There's bigger ones. Give me the next picture. And I'm not advertising. I'm not going to start selling you rubber bands at the end of this. These are just the pictures we got. Thank you. You could put those up. So these rubber bands were meant to be put around big things. But he said, how is this little thing going to fit around there? And what he realized was that if they weren't, if they didn't stretch them beforehand, they weren't going to fit. They began to pop or snap when they tried to put them on these furniture. So what the old guys would do is they would get them and they would uh, stretch them across the truck from one bar to the other to, to kind of get it loose. And he goes that they were more effective once they were stretched out. Can I tell you that that's the same with you and I. Unless we allow God to stretch us out, we're not going to fit around where he wants to take us. We're not going to be able to be as useful. We're not going to be in the place that we should be if we do not allow God to stretch us. But that word, it's such, it's such a nice word, stretching, right? Oh, it's so biblical. We use it here. But really what it means is you're going through the ringer, barely surviving. You're barely making it. I was watching a UFC fight the other day, and this guy was getting his head knocked in. Every time, it looked like he was about to fall. It kind of looked like he was, uh, there's a fighting style, right, called the drunken monkey. You ever seen that? I'm showing my age here, but you know how they act like they're drunk. Well, this guy was getting hit right on the jaw, and he would stumble backwards, but he would stay up. And the guy would think he was going to win. He jumped on him. And every time, the bell would ring and save this guy. How many know we can feel like that sometimes? <laughs> we're barely hanging in there. There's ba we're barely standing. We're barely making it from one service to the next, from one paycheck to the next, uh, 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 from one day that we get home to the next. We're barely surviving. But can I tell you, if you allow God to fully stretch you, because God doesn't stretch you to break you. He stretches you to use you, to build you up. We're more effective when we're in God's hand. Let's read our text, James 1, in verse 2 through 4. And I'm going to be reading the New Living Translation. It says, Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete and needing nothing. Let me ask you a question. How many here are perfect and complete and you don't need anything? Raise your hand. None of us, right? Unfortunately. So in order to get there, we have to... Consider it an opportunity for great joy when where faith is tested and when your endurance has a chance to grow. Let's look at, first of all, our faith that is not strong. Why, why do we have to grow? Why do we have to be stretched? Why do we have to go through hard things? Why do we have to face adversity? When we come to Christ, we, we come with our problems. We come uh, 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 to salvation with broken hearts, with broken marriages, with broken minds, with broken bodies. We come to God sick, uh, addicted. We come to God with, with so many problems, asking God, help me. I can't get out of this alone. Salvation comes to us in our weakest moment. How many could say, thank God that he lifts us up? But our faith should not just stay there. Our faith doesn't just stay in one part. We need to keep growing, developing. Faith is our central part of Christianity. If you do not have faith, then what do we have? Faith is seeing, or I'm sorry, faith is believing without seeing. 
right? We believe in God, but yet we've never seen him. We believe that he's there even though we don't feel him sometimes. Faith is such a big part of who we are as Christians that if our faith is not grown or if our faith is not matured, we will get left behind. Prayer requires faith, right? If you don't have faith, then what are you praying? Who are you praying to? What are you praying for? You have to believe for you, in order for prayer to be effective. The Bible says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. But faith is determined by you. You determine how much faith you have. Faith can peak. Faith can stagnate. Faith can become routine. Faith can become fruitless, not produce. Weak faith, small faith, right? We know that story in Matthew uh, the, the, where the boat is, uh, I'm sorry, where Peter is, is in the boat with the disciples and Jesus is walking on the water, right? And Peter calls out to him and says, if it's you, call me. And Jesus says, come. He calls him out. And Peter does what I consider one of the greatest miracles in the Bible. He walked on water. And in verse 30 through 31, it says, but when he saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified and began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. You have so little faith, Jesus said. Why did you doubt me? So that we can walk in God, right? Peter's a believer. He's a follower of Jesus. He's a disciple. He gave his life. He gave up everything to follow Jesus. Yet even Peter, in a moment of weakness, began to doubt. And Jesus says, your faith is lacking. We can serve God. We can come to church. We can raise our hands. We can pray. But sometimes when your faith is tested, let me tell you that sometimes our faith is going to be weak. Our faith is going to be little. Our faith is not going to match up to where it's supposed to be. Can I tell you, you're in good company if that ever happens to you? And that's why we need God to begin to stretch us. Because our faith cannot stay the same. It needs to grow. Oh, but pastor, the Bible says, if you only have faith the size of a mustard seed. Yeah, sometimes we don't even have that. Speaking for myself, right? Let's look at, secondly, stretching. What is stretching? When we use that term, what does it mean? There's a lot of different ways stretching can manifest itself. When you're being stretched to capacity, it means that there's a lot on you, right? And in terms of, uh, of workload, you can have a lot of work to do to where you feel overwhelmed. This is too much for me to handle. The words, I'm at my limit. Has anybody ever said that before? I can't do any more. I can't handle any more. Right? In Mexico, we use that, uh, uh, um, we use a gesture to signify I'm done, right? Do you, you know what that gesture is? Estoy hasta aquí. Right? Have you ever seen that? It means I can't. This is my limit. I'm above my limit. I'm underwater. It's too much for me. It can manifest itself in workload. It can manifest itself, manifest itself in relationships. This is too much. I can't go on any longer. I can't handle this on my own. It can be in our finances. I, I don't know how. I don't know where. I, I don't know what we're going to do. The fact that you say, I'm at my limit, that's where God begins to work in us and remind us. He's stretching you so that you can handle those things. Remember, God will never give you more than you can handle. God will never place on you something that will break you. God knows your limits. God knows what you have inside. If he's placed something on you, rest assured, he knows it's in you to persevere and go through. The Bible says that we should take up our cross daily. He didn't say it was going to be easy. 
He didn't say it was going to be light. He said, take up your cross because I know you can. When God begins to stretch you, when you find, hey, something's wrong. I don't have enough time in my day. I don't have enough uh, uh, arms. I don't have enough of me to go around. Something's wrong. I'm not enough to cope with my life. I need more of me. Well, can I tell you that's wrong? What we need is more of God. Paul said it the best. I need to diminish and God needs to increase. I must decrease so that he can increase. When God stretches you, it's for the purpose of growing your faith. The question is, can you recognize that God is stretching you? Can you see that in your life God is stretching you? And if you can't, let me tell you our text in James chapter 1 verse 2 through 4 He tells us exactly how he will stretch you. You ready? Let's read it again. Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles come of any kind, when troubles of any kind come your way, when they knock on your door, consider it an opportunity for great joy. When you do a word study in the Greek of Troubles of any kind. When you deep dive that, do you know what that means? It means anything is fair game, right? Anything is open. Any kind, anything. When troubles of any kind. Pastor, do you think when my finances are, are when I'm negative, or do you think the fact that I'm fighting, and my, do you think that the sickness, do you think that it's a test from God? God, here he said, dear brothers and sisters, when troubles come of any kind, It's an opportunity for you to grow. When troubles come of any kind, consider it a chance to grow. How does God stretch us? Sometimes it's troubles, it's problems, and God's helping you, but he wants you to be stretched and to grow. I was talking to a pastor out on the field and he was telling me about the challenges in his life, in his church, how they're growing. His church is experiencing revival. They're hit, I think they doubled or tripled their size recently. And he was telling me, man, it's just too much for me. I don't think I can handle this. He was telling me that, that the amount, the, the, uh, that what, they, what that size requires of him and his wife, he thinks he can't give. He says, I, I'm really considering just asking pastor to send me somewhere else so I can start from zero and bringing somebody more capable, somebody more qualified to take my church. And I remember telling him, I think, I go, what if instead of you leaving, what if God has you there? And the growth is really God saying, I need you to grow to be able to continue pastoring this church. The solution isn't let me go somewhere else. This is too hard. This is not for me. And he's qualifying it, right? After we talked, he was like, well, yeah, I guess you're right. I was just covering up my inadequacies or or my uh, shortcomings. But really, God is asking him to step up. God is stretching him and his wife to be able to handle it. How many know we send people out so that they can disciple people, so their churches grow? If it grows and they don't want it, something's wrong. It's to grow. It's the same thing in our life. Or We're praying for God to give us more. We're praying for God to take us to the next level in my life, in, 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 in my marriage. I need the next level. God, I need you to take me to the mountains. I need, you to, I need to soar with the eagles. I need to uh, go to the mountaintops. God's like, I'll take you there, but it's going to take some stretching. The solution isn't let me leave, let me quit, let me get out, let me take a step back. God says you're restarting everything all over again. What I need you to do is step up and grow to be able to handle these things. With every chapter of your life where God begins to ask more of you, I'm going to tell you right now, the biggest temptation is to walk away. This is too hard for me. 
this is too much. I can't handle anymore. I'm about to break. That You know how, have you, how, how many of you have ever stretched a rubber band and it popped on you? My pastor, I'm, I'm right there. I'm about to pop. I'm about to, to burst. And right there we decide to walk away. Right there we decide to step away. When really all God wanted was you to press through and he was going to stretch you to where you were able to handle it. Because God's ultimate goal is to place you higher and forward. To handle more. He wants to give you more. How many have looked back in their life and you faced a problem similar uh, to one in your past, but now it didn't even affect you? Oh, man, I remember when that used to affect me. I remember when that used to bother me. I remember when I'd miss a handshake. I hated that brother for 10 months. Now, shh, he should be saying hi to me. No, I'm just kidding. You know why you can look back and say those things don't matter to me anymore? It's because you've grown. You've matured. You've been able to go to another level. Can we do that in all the areas of our life? It's like parents with children. They want to trust you. They want to trust their children. The, our teenagers are reaching an age where they can drive now, 16, 17, right? And they want responsibility and they want, they want uh, uh, to be treated like adults, right? But how many know parents are not going to trust their kids with everything all at once, or at least you shouldn't? What you do is you give them as they can handle. As they become responsible, you give them more and you give them more. The opposite is true. If they're not responsible, you give them less and less until you have to start taking away what they do have. I should have preached on parenting. Come on. I want you to listen. If you're not listening, you're not, cap you're not getting this. Let me just simply say this. What you're dealing with, what you face in your life, problems, whatever kind, any kind, right? Whatever you're facing, there's two things you need to understand. Number one is that God knows what you're going through, and he will help you if you ask him. That's number one. Number two, you can't look at them as burdens because Jesus on the cross, when he died and he shed his blood, he took the burdens from us. Problems and things that we go through are not burdens because burdens are meant to weigh us down. What God is trying to do is working on the inside, not on the outside. Jesus can carry your burdens, but you need to be stretched in your character, in your life, in the decisions you're making. The idea of stretching is being able to do things you have never been able to do before. Right? How many have ever... Uh, Unfortunately, I'm at an age where, and I'm out of shape too, right? But I'm at an age where I can't just go to the park on the drop of a dime and go play basketball anymore. How do you know that, Pastor? Because I tried it. Pastor, you want to go play? Yeah, yeah. And I pull up like I always have in my whole life. Pull out my shoes because I always have my car ready with my basketball stuff. I got my ball. I got my shoes. Put it on. I just, all I did was get in the game to shoot around, pull the muscle. Oh, no. Some little kid there. Help that old man. Why are y'all laughing? So wasn't that funny? Anyway, the point is, I went and I went to the uh, to go do physical therapy because I really jacked up my leg, and they were stretching and stuff. And the therapist told me, "Hey, so you know, how long did you stretch before?" How I look at him, I was like, "Stretch." And he looked at me, he's like, sir, he's looking at me like this, like, sir, you need to start stretching. He goes, whenever you're going to play basketball, whenever you're going to do physical activity that's fast like that, you know, go for a little jog, you know, warm up with 15 minutes. Warm up, that's the whole game, 15 minutes. And then once you warm up, you know, do these stretches, do the static stretches, do these dynamic. And once your muscles are warmed up and stretched, then you can play your game. I was like, by that time, I'm just going to go home. What do you mean? Stretching, the idea of stretching your muscles is that you're able to do more flexibility, right? Has anybody ever tried to touch their toes recently through a stretch? It's not that easy as it used to be. 
But if you do it constantly, if you do it daily, you can do more. You can go farther. That's the same thing in God's will, that we, as we get stretched, even though it's painful, even though it hurts in the moment, even though you're like, I can't, I can't. How many have stretched? When I was doing therapy, they're like, you have to stretch for 30 seconds each thing. And I'm over there counting, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, because I just want to finish, right? And they're like, no, no, you have to count one, two. And I was like, 30, number. It's too painful. But there's benefits. You don't get injured. <laughs> What about braces? Braces on your teeth. You know the actual process of braces. Your, your teeth aren't being pulled together. They're actually being stretched to move them. It's painful. How many have ever put on braces before? Raise your hand. It ain't pretty, right? I used to have a... Re anyway. doesn't matter what I used to have, but I got my teeth stretched, and it wasn't pretty. It hurts, but at the end, you can smile that Colgate smile. In 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verse 10, we hear this famous prayer, the Jabez prayer. How many of you have heard the Jabez prayer? I think a lot of us have prayed this. Jabez called on the God of Israel saying, oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me, that you would keep me from evil, that I may not cause pain. So God granted him what he had requested. He's saying, God, enlarge me. God, give me more. God, make me a leader. God, uh, keep me from evil. He's praying, God, I need more from you. And God says, okay, I'll give it to you. To enlarge, to grow. That's what God wants to do with us. God wants you to have these things. It says, and God granted him what he requested. God's not up there saying, oh, I'm not, I'll give you the scraps off the table. No, God wants to give you what you're asking for. But you have to be ready for it you have to be stretched beyond what you are right now in isaiah 54 verse 3 it says and for you shall expand to the right and to the left and your descendants shall inherit the nations and make the desolate cities inhabited that god wants that for us God wants to give that to us. But can you endure the stretching? I want to finish off here with the results of stretching. There's some outcomes that can, we can benefit from. Maybe you're here and you're facing problems right now. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. I think all hands would go up. In some way or another, we're facing something. You're not alone. We're all facing a, a, a certain giant. We're facing a problem. We're facing something that we think is overwhelming us. Uh, we're, we're facing things in our life that we don't know how we're going to be able to schedule in or organize or budget. But can I tell you that if you allow the stretching process, if you keep your heart right, if you stay in God's will during the stretching, there's some things that can come out of it. Number one that will come out of it is your faith will grow. Or in other words, your relationship with God will grow. The disciples, after being called out by Jesus, right, or having little faith, when they're in the boat and the, the winds and everything was uh, uh, moving and shaking and they say, God, we're going to die, we're going to die. And Jesus wakes up and just lifts up his hand. Peace, calm. And the wind stopped and everything stopped and they were amazed. They were amazed by him and said, who is this that even the wind and seas obey him? They had a different view of Jesus after they were in a storm. Can I tell you that's the same thing in our life. You will begin to have a different relationship with God when you're going through hard things. Because if you're not going through anything, we can tend to forget what God has done for us. What God is doing in us. We can tend to think that I'm okay on my own. I make enough money now. I'm off the drugs. I have a good relationship. I'm feeling healthy. Ah, thank you God, but that's all I need. Our relationship isn't as deep as it used to be we can think of ourselves as what i i'm offering god more than what he's giving me that's why we don't get involved 
That's why we're okay with just bringing ourselves to church, with giving large offerings, with giving our time, helping others. But really, we don't see what God is asking from us. When you're going through the stretching, when God begins to move in your life and there's a lot of issues and you don't have an answer and you don't have a way out, your view of God changes. He becomes real to you because you need him. You will always have a different understanding of who Jesus is for you after a storm, after a trial but only if you endured. Too many people in the middle of the stretching process, they leave, and they don't view God in a good light anymore. God abandoned me. God didn't do anything for me. This whole Jesus thing didn't work. The church thing didn't work. Well, did you stick it out? Yeah, I was there for two weeks. The second thing that results from enduring stretching is your character grows. The text that we read, it says, for you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. Or in the New King James Version, your patience is growing. How many have ever prayed for patience? Pastor said it before, one of the most dangerous prayers, right? God, give me patience. Because what is he going to do? God doesn't just give you patience. I'm not going to go lay hands on you. Boom, patience. Wow, I'm so patient. I'm going to go stand in a three-hour line. No. You pray for patience. God says, I'm going to give you opportunities for your patience to be tested. That's how you grow your patience. God, give me more love for people. Watch out. God's going to put in your path some really unlovable people. God, I ask, bless my finances. Okay, well, God's going to test it. There's areas in your life that you're praying for, but God needs to test it so that it produces it. This is the same thing with our character. We can think we're fine. We, from the outside, how we dress, how we present ourselves to the world, to the church, to our work, it's a certain way. But can I tell you, deep down inside, we all have a character, and God doesn't see the outside. He sees the inside. So with that he wants to deal with you, he deals with your character character when he's stretching you what he's really dealing with is your character who you really are on the inside God through stretching can move things in our life and put them in the right perspective how things should be how things are right like the braces again they put your, your teeth are crooked, facing the wrong way, throwing gang signs all the time. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> God forgive me. But braces, they put your teeth straight, right, because of the stretching. It's the same thing with our character. Our character could be all jacked up, crooked, misaligned. But when we're stretched... When we allow God to work in us, all of a sudden, our character becomes aligned. And it shows. Everything starts on the inside, goes into the outside. God's not going to work on your outside first. He works on your inside. The same thing with the rubber band, right? It demonstrates that the more it's stretched, the further it goes. How many remember shooting rubber bands at somebody? It's pretty fun if you've never done it. Especially when they don't see it coming. When you pull a rubber, if you pull a rubber band only up to here, it only goes so far. But the more you stretch it, the farther it will go. Stretching is God launching us forward in our life. You know why preaching hurts here? You ever notice, man, you know how people say, oh, preaching hurts, preaching. Okay, until you're sitting there and they're preaching your issue, it doesn't hurt, right? When you're sitting there and they're naming things that you've done, uh, they're naming uh, character flaws. And if you're this and you're, you're sitting there like, dang, that's me. Man, I've been in, in sermons where they're like, and you do this and that. Or, or even marriage sermons, and you treat your wife like that. And I just did that, you know, coming into the parking lot. I'm sitting there like this. I didn't want to look at my wife, right, because it hurts. Why does it hurt? Because they're addressing the truth. They're addressing what's on the inside, what nobody knows. They're addressing it through preaching. 
But can I tell you, preaching that hurts will cause you to come to the altar and say, God, change that about me. Change who I am. Number three, the result from stretching. God can trust you with more. Luke 16.10 says, He who is faithful in what is least will be faithful also in much. And he who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in much. We've all heard that scripture, right? If you're not faithful with the little things, God won't trust you with more. How many agree with that? It's, it's a, it's a, this isn't just a biblical principle. It, it's physical. It's in the work. You're not going to receive promotion if you haven't been faithful in your job position now. You're not going to, if you're a teenager, you're not going to receive more responsibility if you haven't been faithful with what you are now. It's, it's, it's ap- applicable in all our life. Well, why would we think it's any different when it comes to God working in our character? God won't give you more, won't allow you to get more until he works in the little that you have. Until you've allowed what you have right now to be stretched and worked where God can be able to use you. The ultimate goal is God wants to bless you. He wants to give. He says that if you on earth, as an earthly father can get good gifts... How much more our Heavenly Father wants to give good gifts. He wants to give. He wants to let out. But He needs to make sure that you're able to handle it. Stretching. Going through things. It's not a moment where you can think, oh, God left me. God's mad at me. No. If anything, God wants to help us. God is putting those things so that you can reach the potential that you have. Potential isn't just unleashed. It has to be brought out. Even though it hurts and even though there might be times where you don't know if you're going to make it, if you can handle it. Can I tell you, you're safer in the midst of a stretching period in God's will than a peaceful, quote unquote, peaceful period out in the world by yourself. You're safer in God's hands being stretched trying to press forward and grow than any time in the world by yourself. God is the great potter, right? We talk about that, the potter's house. Jeremiah went down to the potter's house and he saw the potter working with the clay. And it sounds so beautiful. It sounds so, you know, I could hear classical music in the background. And the guy's there molding the clay and his hands are all dirty, getting water and building it. It sounds pretty, but really what it is, is when they're, you have to use force when you're manipulating that clay. It's not like it's Play-Doh where it's all soft. It's hard and they get water to be able to apply pressure, to move it, to press it down. It's hard work. There's pressure applied. It's the same thing. When we're working, it's not going to look pretty. It's not going to have the classical music. It's not going to be uh, all uh, 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 sunshine and rainbows. But can I tell you, if we get dirty and allow God to apply pressure in our life, the end result will always be worth it. If you allow God to stretch you, if you make it through, if you survive, when you get out of it, God will be able to trust you with more. It's better to allow God to stretch you and make you better than for you to quit and stay the same way forever. Don't quit. Don't give up. You're right there. You're about to make it. I want to finish off with this scripture, Isaiah 43. Isaiah 43, I'm going to read verses 2 and 3. It says, when you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through fire of oppression, you will not be burnt up. The flames will not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt as a ransom for your freedom. I gave Ethiopia and Seba in your place. That God is saying, no matter what you go through, you go through deep waters, you feel like you're drowning. How many of you feel like you're drowning? You go through fire, things heating up, things are getting intense. You ever felt that, like you're in an oven? God says, no matter what you go through, I will be there. 
you can go through the deepest waters, but I will be there. You can go through the rivers of difficulty, but you will not drown. You can walk through the fire of oppression, but you will not be burnt up. That tells us, hey, God is with us through the stretching, through the problems, that God is right next to you, cheering you on, hoping and praying for you that you'll make it because at the end comes the blessing that he wanted to give you all along. God loves you, and God has a plan for your life, and he wants you to make it, but you need to endure. You need to make it to the end. Because the end has the biggest blessing. Can we give God a clap offering tonight? God, we thank you, God, for who you are. We thank you for what you're doing in our life, Lord God. We ask that you would be with us this evening. Let's bow our heads. Close our eyes. Growth. Advancing. On the way to our destiny, there's going to be some testing. There's going to be some growth. There's going to be some stretching. But I guarantee you it's worth it. I guarantee you at the end of it, you're going to thank God that you didn't quit that you didn't give in. It's okay to stumble. It's okay to mess up, right? God picks us up. The Bible says a just man seven times will fall, but seven times will rise up again. It's okay to, like I said, fall or stumble, but don't give up. It's a different story when you turn your back on God. If you're on the road and you stumble, you're still on the road. You just need to get back up and keep going. If you're on the way and you fall, you can be picked back up. You can be shaken off and, and continue forward. But if you turn around, if you get out of the road, if you go away, that's a different story. Don't quit. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know how deep it is. I don't know how far it goes. I don't know what you're facing in your mind, in your heart. I don't know how big this really is in your life. But all I could tell you is don't quit. Don't give up. Don't blame God. If anything, God's trying to help you. If anything, if you actually look at your situation, this is what I've learned through my life. And this maybe just applies to me, but... Every time I've looked at my life and there's problems, apparently on the outside they look like they're coming from this person, from that person. It looks like it's coming from this and that. But if I really stop and analyze, every time I've, I've got to a head and I have to stop and I analyze things and I pray and I fast, I always find that it turns out I am at the root of my own problems. That there was issues in my character there was issues that had been unresolved that were causing these problems to grow in my life. And I had to go back and say, God, it's not even their fault. It's not the economy's fault. It's not this person, that person. You know what? It's my fault. Help me. I have these flaws, these character issues. Stretch me to get them out. You can be delivered. You can see victory, but you need to persevere to the end. Real quick, before we move on, because I do believe that God wants to do work here at this altar. God wants to meet with you. Maybe God's opening your eyes. You're finally seeing for the first time that everything, all these problems are not the devil, the world. It's actually God working in you, trying to stretch you. You're finally getting that, and you can't wait to come to the altar and say, God, help me make it through. Before I do that, you're here all across this place. Every head is bowed, every eye is closed. You're visiting, or maybe you're a backslider, or maybe you're a church person, but you say, you know what, I need God. You want to pray, you want to accept Jesus Christ in your life, I want you to raise your hand. Let me pray with you. God sees that hand right here. Who else? You know what, pastor, I've come to church my whole life. I've come to church for years, and I think I'm just done. I think I stopped believing. I got to a point in my life where nothing was going right, where I didn't even believe that God was real. Can I tell you that he is real and he loves you? 
And he's trying to stretch you to make you better, to give you those things that you've been asking. Maybe you're backslide, you're a church, but you want to get your heart right. You want to get your heart aligned. You want to start that process all over with God. Raise your hand. Let me pray with you. You want to come back to God. You want to get your heart right. Raise your hand. God wants to welcome you back. God wants to work on you again. God sees these two hands up there. Yes. Who else? God, I need you. I need you. I don't want to go another step without you. You want to accept and just raise your hand. Let me pray with you. I want those who raise their hands. I want you to look at me. Did you mean that? You want to pray? Come forward. I want to pray. I'm going to have somebody pray with you. You back there. Did you mean that? Can I pray with you? This isn't to embarrass you or put you on. Every head is bowed. Every eye is closed. No one's looking. I have somebody pray with my sister over here. Church, let's stand to our feet. I want you to take as much time as you need, but I need you to come to this altar with an honest heart, with an open mind saying, God, if you're stretching me, God, help me endure. God, if these problems that I'm facing, show me what, what it is in me that I needs to grow. Show me what side of my character. Show me what side of me is that, that, that I'm failing in. And now above all, come to this altar say, God, don't let me quit. God, I don't, I refuse to give up. Ask God to fill you with the Holy Spirit. Ask God to fill you with the fire, with the passion. Ask God to fill you with the desire to see it through to the end. That God wants to work in you. Come. Come. Now is the time. Just give it all to God. Give it all to God as we sing this song. what you're facing I don't know what it is all I know is that God will get you through but also I know that God's working something in you God's working in you he's stretching you for something look at it as something good as an opportunity that God is presenting you think of it as an, an application for leadership for for growth for more Take all the time you need. This is God's time with you. Let it out. Talk to him. Say, God, help me. God, help me. Give me strength. Maybe you've fallen. Ask God to get you back up. Maybe you've stumbled. Ask God to remove that stumbling block that you keep falling on. Ask God to stretch you but not break you. Oh, give him all the time you need. Yes. I'm forever grateful. And I'm forever grateful to you. And I'm forever grateful for the cross. I'm forever grateful to you that you came. That you came to seek and the law give God a clap offering tell him how much you love him. thank you Lord thank you Jesus oh God you are holy you are worthy God save us Lord. God give us strength to continue God help us God to see the end Lord God shedi anda la da da ra ba 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 si shedi ondo lo ro bo 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 Bible says in our text dear brothers and sisters when troubles of any kind come your way
consider it an opportunity for great joy. Now, I'll be honest. Can I be honest tonight? I, I don't, I'm not even at that level. Maybe something's missing in my life. But I'm not, at that, I'm not at that level when problems come in my life that I get happy and smile. I, I, I need more discipleship from Pastor Roman, I guess. But I don't just start jumping for joy and woohoo, problems. But I have learned that once they come and once I have no other option but to face them and I'm seeing it, that's when I say, okay, something's happening. God is going to get me through this. Then I can recover. I'm not there yet where I'm jumping for joy and, you know, celebrating. Hey, let's go fellowship. I'm having problems. Come on, somebody. But it says, when you have problems of any kind, consider it an opportunity for great joy. Why? Because you know that they're coming to stretch you and that if you endure, you're going to receive more. That should make you happy. I know when you're in the middle of it. I know some of you are in the middle of it. Or you're in the beginning of it. Or you think it's the end. You're hoping it's the end. I don't know where you're at. But this is an opportunity for you to grow. So that God can give you more. Take it. Let God take you all the way. Don't quit. That's the only advice I can give. Don't quit. Don't ever, ever quit. Don't ever, ever give up. On your marriage. On your finances. On God. On yourself. Don't ever give up on yourself. Nobody believes in me, Pastor. God will always be on your side no matter what. But stick it out. And God will help you. Amen. That's all I have this evening. Don't forget all the things we have this coming week. If you want to sign up for baptisms, you want to get baptized, you want to take that step, don't forget we have the sign-up sheets in the back. And uh, we're going to have a great time this week. All those announcements, don't forget them. Uh, the worship concert on Saturday, I really 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 encourage you to go it's going to be a great time you never been to one it's just a time to just give god all the glory so i invite you to come out bring somebody in sunday all the activities easter sunday we're wearing those bright colors celebrating the resurrection of jesus christ amen if you're going to come to church one day of the year that's the day so don't miss amen we'll have a great time let's bow our heads close our eyes I'm going to have my brother, uh, Eddie, by the you on this side to close out in prayer. Amen. God bless you.